If you are using the same resume for every single job that is out there, then you are definitely doing something wrong. Your resume will only be picked by the system if your resume has an 85 or 90% match. Remember this, employers in Canada love to see numbers on your resume, specifically the numbers that highlight your achievements. What's up YouTube, it's Shivansh here. So in my previous video, I told you guys about how to find a job in Canada and a lot of people asked me about how to create a Canadian style resume. So in this video, I will tell you everything that you need to know about creating a Canadian style resume that will make sure that you get a job in Canada very quickly. The tips that I'll share with you guys in this video are the ones that I use to update my resume and apply for jobs and these have worked for me every single time. And if you are new to this channel, then my name is Shivansh and I create videos about studying and working in Canada. And if you are interested in this type of content, then you should definitely subscribe to my channel and feel free to check out other useful videos on my channel as well. With that being said, let's start this video. So first of all, what is a Canadian style resume? Now a Canadian resume is very similar to your regular resume, but there are two major differences. Number one is that it will help you get a job in Canada. And number two is that the format of the resume is very different from what we are used to back in India. So the very first step to create your Canadian style resume is to include all your relevant information and that too in a proper structure. Now what is a proper structure? So typically a Canadian style resume should have your contact information at the very top and then next you need to include your educational qualifications and then after that you need to include your relevant skills and then finally include your relevant work experience. You should try to include all these things on the first page itself and on the second page of the resume you can include any personal projects that you worked on, any relevant volunteering experience that you might have and any significant achievements in your school or college or previous work experience. So in this section you can include any awards or scholarships that you received received in the past. One very important thing is that whatever you put on your resume should always be in reverse chronological order. What this means is that your latest educational qualification or your latest experience should always come first. And then you should also make sure that your resume is one page or maximum two pages long. And if you decide to include a second page, then try to include all the most important stuff on the first page itself because recruiters in Canada receive hundreds of applications every single day and they don't have too much time to read really long resumes and they only have 30 to 40 seconds to skim through a person's resume and figure out if they have the relevant skill set and if they should call you for an interview or not. So make sure to make your resume very clear and concise and try to limit it to maximum two pages. So the next tip for you is about formatting. You'll be surprised to know that resumes in Canada don't require any fancy formatting. You don't have to make it too colorful or include any designer fonts. What you need to do is make sure that the font that you are using is actually readable. So you can use fonts such as Times New Roman, Arial or Calibri. Also try to include as many white spaces as possible so that the recruiter can easily figure out the different sections and the different types of content that you have on your resume. You should also use consistent formatting throughout your resume. So whatever font you choose, make sure to use the same font throughout all the different sections of your resume. And ideally the font size of your resume should be at least 11 so that the recruiter can easily read your resume and that that too without any strain. Next, you should avoid writing really long paragraphs and make sure to include everything in bullet points instead. This will make sure that your resume is actually readable. Also, you should always highlight the headings of each section of your resume and also highlight any relevant keywords. For example, for the experience section, your heading should always be of a slightly bigger font than the rest of the content. And you should also highlight the name of the companies and your positions in bold letters. So the next step is extremely important, but sadly, a lot of people make this mistake. So when writing your resume, make sure to never write general statements in your work experience section. Rather than listing your job responsibilities or including any generic statements about what your job was, 
you should actually include what you were able to achieve in that specific role. So for example, instead of saying that I was responsible for making a software application in Python, you should write designed and developed a Python application that helped the company achieve X, Y, Z. Now this creates a huge impact as opposed to a general statement and it will also tell the recruiter about what you did, exactly how you did it and what was the outcome. So make sure to follow this structure of what you did, how you did it and what was the outcome every time you write any point in your work experience section because this will help the recruiter understand what exactly you are capable of and what did you actually achieve in your previous roles. Okay, before continuing, if you guys are getting any value out of my video, then make sure to give this video a big thumbs up because this will help me reach more number of people and it will also support my YouTube channel. Now let's continue this video. Next tip for you is that you should tailor your resume towards the specific job profile that you are applying to. Because as I said in my previous video, there is no one fit for all resume and one resume cannot work for every single job that you are going to apply to. If you are using the same resume for every single job that is out there, then you are definitely doing something wrong. Every employer is different and everybody wants a different set of skills and you need to make sure that your resume is tailored towards that requirement. For example, the resume that you will submit for a data analyst role will be very different from your resume for a software developer role. Now, even though you are eligible for both these roles because you have the technical skills and you also have the educational background, however, the resume that you submit for a data analyst role should focus more on technologies such as SQL or Tableau or Python and not focus too much on software architecture design and project management, etc. Next, extremely important tip that will definitely help you get a lot more interview calls and a lot more phone calls is to include all the relevant keywords from the job description in your resume. If you don't have the relevant keywords on your resume, then you will not even be called for the first round of interviews. And this happens because of ATS or application tracking system. So these days, a lot of big companies in Canada use the ATS application to filter out candidates who are not relevant according to the job description. So what this application does is that it looks at your resume and then it also looks at the job description and tries to match all the relevant keywords that exist in your resume. And in a lot of cases, your resume will only be picked by the system if your resume has an 85 or 90% match. So try to include as many relevant keywords as possible so that your resume can be picked up by the ATS system. You can also use some online resume matching tools such as JobScan where you can copy paste your resume and also copy paste the job description and the tool will tell you exactly how good of a match is your resume to that job description. And it will also tell you which specific keywords are you missing from your resume. So you can use all those relevant keywords in your resume and increase your chances of getting the first callback. Now this goes without saying, but please don't include any relevant keywords on your resume just because they exist on the job description. If you don't have that skill set, if you don't possess those skills, then make sure not to include those skills on your resume because that would count as lying to your prospective employer. And even if you get selected in the first screening round, you will anyway get rejected in the second round because you will not have all the skills that are actually required for that specific job. The next tip for you is to always quantify your achievements. Now, this is a very important tip that not too many people are aware of. And if you do this right, and if you quantify your achievements, then your resume will definitely stand out and you will also become the top choice for that job very easily. Remember this, employers in Canada love to see numbers on your resume, specifically the numbers that highlight your achievements. So for example, if you are a manager, then you should write that you led a team of five people and achieved X, Y, Z. Similarly, if you are in sales, then you can write increased company sales by X percent. And if I talk about myself, then in my previous job, I created a tool or an application that helped reduce the expenses of the company by $30,000. So when a recruiter or a hiring manager sees this on my resume, it immediately creates a very positive impression in their minds and this is exactly what you need to do in order to stand out. So always use numbers and percentages to highlight your achievements. This creates a huge impact on the hiring manager and will also give you an edge over all the other candidates. Next step is very obvious, but you should never include any personal information on your resume. 
So on your resume, you don't have to include your profile picture. If you are putting your hobbies or personal interests on your resume, then you should not do that because frankly, nobody cares about them because they are not going to be relevant to the job that you're applying to. But if you have achieved something in a specific field or in your hobby or something, then you should definitely put that on your resume. For example, if you are a blogger and if you are applying for a copywriting role or a marketing role, then you should definitely include your blogging experience on your resume resume because that will complement your experience and your skill set and your blogging experience will definitely give you an edge over all the other candidates. Next tip for you is that do not mention your references on your resume. Only provide references if your employer specifically asks for it. And if they don't ask for a reference, then there is no need to mention any references on your resume. The final tip for you is that always supplement your resume with a tailor-made cover letter. So a cover letter is basically a formal letter that goes over your soft skills and also your technical skills and also tells the employer why you are the perfect fit for that specific role. So basically your cover letter is your sales pitch and it will tell the employer why you are the best person that they should hire for this specific role. And you should always take out some time to create a custom cover letter for every single job that you are applying to. Trust me guys, most people completely ignore this and they don't include any cover letters. But if you include a custom cover letter, it will definitely give you some extra points. So that's it guys. I hope that now you know how to create a Canadian style resume that will help you get more interview calls and more job offers in Canada and that too very quickly. If you have any questions, then feel free to comment below and you can also follow me on Instagram at shivansingla119 and I'll be happy to chat with you. Also make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel to watch more such videos about studying and working in Canada and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.